Hello and welcome back to our Stealth AI series. In the previous episode, we set up our path points for our AI to follow and we assigned them to the enemy, as well as set up their patrol path behavior, whether they're going to loop, patrol back or do nothing when they reach the end. So let's get started with the actual movement to and through these path points. So this is going to be going onto the behavior tree and making our own custom tasks. So let's go over to our behavior tree. Now in our behavior tree, currently we're doing a find random point task. So obviously we want to take that out because we're not doing random points now uh, anymore. We're now doing path points. So we're going to go new task up top and create a new BT task blueprint base template. And once that's made, we're going to go into our content browser and rename it uh, because it makes it easier to find it later on. So I'm going to call this one find path point underscore task. So the whole idea of this is going to find out what path the uh, what which path index the character is trying to run towards at the moment, and then control uh, and then get hold of say those uh, path points uh, based on that array that we set up in a previous episode. So on our enemy. We, on our enemy character, we've got a couple of variables. Uh, sorry, and our guard enemy, not that one. This one. Uh, we've got the patrol path array, the behavior, and the path index. Now, the path index is controlling what path they're heading towards. So it's going to start off at zero, so it's going to run towards the first point, first of all. And then once it reaches that, we're going to increase that path point, and so on and so forth. So let's go and have a look at our task here. Now, on our task, we're going to start things off like we always do with a receive execute. So this is what triggers as soon as this task starts. Once we've got that, we're going to need to get hold of a few things. First of all, we want to get hold of the guard enemy pawn because it controls our, path, our patrol path and the path index. So we want to get hold of that. So we're going to take the controlled pawn pin here and we need to cast that to our guard enemy. Once you've got that, we want to promote this blue pin at this reference here to a variable. That way we can access it whenever we like. We would have to keep casting to it and causing all sorts of issues. So that's the very first thing. Next we need to tell it to report back what path it is going to be going towards next. So for that we need to get the enemy pawns path index. So get current path index. And then from that path index, that is going to be like 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. So it can, by default, it starts at 0. We're going to get use that to get from that array on our, from our pawn. So drag from the pawn here and get patrol path array. And then from there, we can get a copy of the path point we need. So this is getting us our path point based on the current path index. Now, what we're going to do here is going to basically find out the location of our path point. So we're going to take this uh, path point object reference here, and we're going to report back its location. So we need to plug that into a blackboard key vector. So we're going to go into our variable list and go blackboard, uh, not blackboard, sorry, bb underscore target vector. And this is going to be a blackboard key selector type. So this acts like a bucket where we're going to store some values that other tiles can access. So we need to make that editable. So tick the editable box. And then from there, we're going to drag that out, choose get. And then from that, we're going to set value as vector. Plugging that in to a start there. Once we've done that, we've got the value here. We need to get that from our reference here. So we're going to grab from the reference and get actor location. And plug that into there. Now, what is a good practice thing to do when you're doing uh, actor location inside of a task for a navigable point is to use the random point in navigable radius node to help you make sure you get a point that is actually navig navigable. So grab the return value here and search for get random point in navigable radius and we're going to plug that into our end result there this way it just ensures that it's going to be on that nav mesh somewhere 
So give it a little radius of, say, 50 will do. Maybe a bit lower. Let's do, like, 20. And it just it just gets rid of any niggling issues that we may have if we place our path slightly off or away from the floor. Okay, so that's got the vector there. And when we're finished here, we're just going to do a finish execute. And tick success. Hit compile. And we are done here. So what we're going to do now from this is go into our behavior tree and add it to our sequence. Find path point task. Making sure that the BB target vector on the right here is set to the correct uh, blackboard selector here. So that's going to find us the path point and then this is going to move to that path point. Uh, we also need to store the path points wait time and also uh, yeah, path, path points wait time and then pass that through to another node here afterwards. So let's go back into our find path point task and before we do the finish execute we're going to get the guard enemy pawn back out and then from there we're going to get patrol path like so. We're also going to get the patrol path index uh, path index. There you go. And do exactly the same. So get a copy to find out the exact path we want, uh, the exact point we want to go to. And a variable on that path is going to be a wait time. So we're going to get wait, and you want to get the wait time, and we want to get the wait deviation. So with those in there now, we need to add our new blackboard key. So go back to your blackboard and go new key float. And this is going to be the path point wait time. Hit save and then go back to your find path point task. In here, we need to make a new variable for the key selector. So go new variable, do BB wait time and make it editable by clicking the little eyeball icon. So now we need to set this value here by using the wait time and the wait deviation. So using these two together to get an ultimate end wait time. So we're going to get this wait time and we're going to do a find random, uh, do not find random, but get a random uh, float in range. So get random, uh, maybe just random, random float. There you go. And we're going to do random float in range. Now the minimum is going to be the wait time minus the weight deviation and the maximum is going to be weight time plus the weight deviation and that gets us a return value that's randomized based on that deviation in the weight time. We can now set that to our blackboard key selector so drag that out, choose get and then set the value as a float. Plug in your return value and then plug in that all the way back in here and into the finish execute. So overall what's happening here is when we start the task we're getting the guard enemy and getting the current path index that they're on. So which path they're heading towards. We then get the patrol path array, find out the exact path point we want. Using that we can find the actor's location, find a random point near it so we know roughly where it is on the nav mesh and store that in that blackboard key selector. We're then getting the array again and getting the current path point that we're walking towards and getting what wait time it currently is and the wait deviation. Using those together, we can calculate our random float in range. And then we're now setting that to a blackboard and finish executing successfully. Hit compile and then go back to your blackboard, uh, into your behavior tree, sorry. And you should see now you've got BB wait time appears as a key here. If it doesn't appear here, it's because you didn't make it editable. So click the editable box or the little eyeball icon. And then on the right hand side, you want to change, make sure the BB wait time and change that to the uh, path point wait time. There we go. So that's going to do the find a path point. We're then going to move to that path point and then we're going to tell it to wait. So drag out and do a wait and do wait blackboard time. This is the same as a wait, but this time you can put use a blackboard key for the time to wait and you want to make sure you're using the path point wait time key here. Once we've done that, we need to increase the path point index of our pawn. 
So what we need to do is create a new task to increase that. So we're going to go new task and BT task blueprint base. And we're going to rename this one here. And we'll call this one reached path point underscore task. So this is going to do two things. First of all, it's going to check whether or not we're at the end of the path. If we are, we're going to handle what we do with the looping or otherwise. If we are at, if we're not at the end of the path, we're just going to increase the path point index. So first of all, we need the execute AI. So execute AI and get controlled pawn cast to guard enemy and promote that to a variable. So you've got reference to it later. Okay, so now we've got that, we need to check whether or not we're at the end of the path. Now the way we do that is we look at the current path index and look at the size of the array. So if we take the guard enemy pawn and look at the array, so get patrol path array, and we also want to get the index. So with the array, we're going to drag out and you want to check if the point is valid. So if you type in valid and you'll see is valid index and we want to check if the current path index if we add one to it so we can increase it by one integer so plus one integer and plug that in if that is not valid we want it to say that hey we're at the end now um, if it is valid we want to store this value as the new path index so we're just going to go into a branch and we'll plug that in to there like so and if it's true let's do the true one because that's the easiest one so if it is a valid index we're going to take the guard enemy pawn get current path index also set current path index and we're going to just drag the current path index into a plus one and plug that into the set so we're getting it, we're changing it, putting it back in. So that's if it's true. So let's just space up like so. There you go. Now if it's false, that means we're at the end of our path and we need to determine what we're going to do based on that enum that we set up on our guard pawn. So on the false here, we need to drag out our guard enemy pawn. Get path behavior. And then we're going to do a switch on this path behavior. So switch on patrol path ending. Plug that into false. And now we're going to do a switch. Now what switch does is it takes the enum. And there's our three options we have available to us. And we can handle what it's going to do for each one. So if it does nothing, then we're not going to do anything. We're just going to tell it to stop the logic and just stand there. So what we're going to do is tell it to not do anything and just tell it to finish execute. success there you go then we want to do maybe a loop okay so if it loops that'd be the next easiest one we're going to tell it to get the good guard enemy pawn here set current path index back to zero and then finish execute here tick success so that's going to set it back to the start and make it run, run back to this first point if we're not doing that, we now need to do patrol back. Now patrol back is very different because patrol back is going to determine what direction we are going in. So for that, we need to handle that on a separate variable on our guard enemy pawn. So for this, we're going to go to guard enemy, add a new variable here, and we'll call this one path direction. And we'll make that a integer and hit compile. So when we compiled it, our path direction, we want to start off by default as one. Now what that means is that we're going forwards. If we want to go backwards, we can do negative one. So this is where the clever bit comes in. If we go into the reach path task here, I'm going to, on the patrol path here, set that to negative one. So set path direction. to negative one and then finish execute 
Now I said there was a clever bit. Now the clever bit is this negative one here. If we go back to where we're adding values to this, like here for example, and here, rather than just adding one to it, if we were to take our pawn and get the path direction and plug that into it, if we're going forwards, it's going to increase it by one. If we're going backwards, it's going to take one away from it, therefore making it go backwards. And is valid index, we'll do it again here. Path direction. And plug that into there like so. So now it'll go all the way up to the end and then work all the way its back. And because it's valid index, we'll re return uh, false if it's not valid, if it goes below zero as well. What that means is that it'll go down false here and then continue back here. And if it does nothing, it'll do nothing and just stand at the end, which it won't do because it's, it's looping. It'll just patrol back. So to patrol back, we need to go this path again. Now, if we're going to keep looping back and forth along this path, what we're going to need to do is do something different other than just set it to a negative one. Instead of doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to take the current value for it and multiply it by negative one. So take hit from here get path direction and multiply this by negative one uh, int by float no not float int by uh, integer negative one and then put that back into the path direction up here because if you times one by negative one you get negative one which is correct if you times negative one by negative one you get positive one and therefore, it will just keep look, looping back and forth. We get to the front, get back, and keep doing that over and over and over again and over again. And that's it. So hit compile, and let's close that. And let's go back to our behavior tree, and let's add our reached path point task at the end here. Perfect. So we reached the end of that. It will do its calculations, and it will go back to the start, and then keep going. I forgot one thing on our true here when we've done the current path index I forgot to put the finish execute pin in again here there we go now let's test that out and push play so now it runs through the motions to each path waits at that point because I told it to wait and away it goes waiting and there and back to start and this one's told to loop so just keep going back and forth so let's now do it the other way so let's change that from loop to patrol back so he'll go through the motions and get to the end and he should walk back along the path and he gets to the last point and he should there you go go back Perfect. Okay, and that'll do it for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to make him so he rotates and turns to face the correct location at each point. And also, we're going to make him change his speed of his walking at each point as well. And any other features we can do at each point, uh, we can handle that there too. So join us in the next part over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady right now. And you can watch it before anyone else. Big shout out and thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. Uh, none of this would be possible without you guys, so massive thank you to all of you. If you're watching this and you're not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out. Big thank you to everyone watching this, and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.